My GCSE Biology Syllabus Statement 4.8. Here we're dealing with the water cycle. Now rather than draw a diagram of the water cycle, students need to be able to take apart diagrams. So let's look at the component parts of the water cycle, starting with evaporation. Something like 96% of all the water in the world is found in the oceans and it's constantly evaporating which means it's going from the liquid form into the gas form or we might call that vapor water vapor and to achieve this we need to provide heat and of course the source of heat to drive evaporation is the sun. A special case of evaporation is that known as transpiration. Transpiration is when plants such as trees take water in through their root system, up through the stem, and then it's evaporated back into the atmosphere. Once more, the driving force for this is the sun. The third part of the water cycle is that of condensation. In the first two instances, water is evaporating to form vapour from the oceans, lakes, and transpiration is the evaporation of water from, uh, from the leaf. This water, if it cools, condenses. So we have water in the gas phase, as a vapour, water vapour, turns back into the liquid phase and this involves cooling and a common way in which cooling would occur of water vapour would be when clouds let's have a cloud there's a cloud so the cloud passes up and over mountain ridges of course at altitude it's cooler and this cooling results in the water within the cloud forming a liquid and this so we get rainfall and that actually leads to our fourth concept which is precipitation or rainfall now in order to have rainfall we first have, have to have evaporation of water from the oceans and lakes and then it's condensation into clouds, it's cooling and then the falling of water as water, rain. When we have precipitation like this then what happens is that the water either runs off over the surface or goes down into the soil and uh, porous rocks. The surface is called surface runoff and the water will gather to form streams and rivers and lakes and for the most part these will drain into the oceans. The water descending down into the rock, porous rocks, this is called groundwater. Of course living things pass water, so it's how we call living things. 
and really what I mean here are the parts of the food chain including the producer and the consumers so let's have a primary consumer here and we'll have a secondary consumer here and water passes through and between individuals and members of each of the trophic levels now the producer of course is taking in water along with CO2 to form carbo simple carbohydrates in the process of photosynthesis so here's water moving through the trophic levels and it passes here but even more directly water as a liquid also passes from one, one link in the food chain to the next so water is here but water as in drinking water having studied these five components what the student must now do is apply these bits of information so I strongly advise what you do next is Google water cycle go to images and there you will see many many examples of graphics of the water cycle study a number of these and in each case identify the condensation the evaporation the transpiration the passage of water through food chains surface runoff lakes rivers and groundwater repeating this process will prepare you well for examination questions.